Can you believe all those greedy hearing aid manufacturers? Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 231. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about who's really making all of the money in the hearing aid industry. But before I do, if you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, it really helps out the channel. And if you are not yet subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on, go ahead and do that as well. It is greatly appreciated. With that said, there has been a narrative out there in the hearing loss community that hearing aid manufacturers are extremely greedy. Now, from an optical standpoint, meaning like you looking at the situation, it would seem as though that you're spending several thousands of dollars on hearing aids and all they are is these little tiny pieces of plastic and metal that amplify sound. And if they're charging thousands of dollars for just that, they've obviously gotta be making a killing because then you have mass production and all of that. And, and I can understand that perspective to be honest with you. And you know, when I when I think about it from the outside perspective, I'm like, I could I could I could see how someone could come to that conclusion. But on the other side of it, you have to start considering the different aspects of hearing treatment, right? The hearing aid manufacturer is only one component of the price of a hearing aid. The other components actually have to do with the hearing care professional that you go to see. And, and that will actually add a considerable amount of cost onto your actual treatment because you're not just paying for the research and development of the hearing aid and the actual materials that it is made out of, you are also paying for the professional care with those devices. But I think a lot of people don't truly understand who is actually making all of the money inside of the hearing aid industry and it is and everything is shifting over to these entities that are really making the money and it isn't the hearing aid manufacturers and it sure as heck isn't the hearing care professionals. So you guys may have seen my vlogs that I did, actually videos that I did, I don't even think that they were vlogs, uh, that I did several months ago talking about how DeMont, who owns Oticon, which is one of the major hearing aid brands out there, actually took their Oticon Intent hearing aids out of the managed care formularies. What does that actually mean? Well, it basically means that if you have an insurance plan that is contracting with different uh, third-party administrators, so on and so forth, uh, they are not allowing you to purchase their hearing aids through those discount channels. Now, again, on the surface, that would make it seem as though Oticon is saying, hey, listen, if we're not able to make a lot of money on these hearing aids, then you can't get these hearing aids and you don't even have them as an option. But at the end of the day, these insurance companies that are out there are really the ones that are dictating how everything is going. Uh, and what I mean by that is that these insurance companies are so big and they have so much money that they can ultimately decide whatever they want in terms of the hearing aids that you have access to and the quality of care that you ultimately receive from your hearing care professional. And to be quite honest with you, Oticon was just fed up with it. Oticon's like, listen, we are developing this amazing technology we are allowing you as the insurance company to give your members access to these devices, but then when they go in and get these devices from the hearing care professionals that they have to go to, they're having a horrible result because the hearing care professional isn't making enough money to justify spending enough time with these patients to give them best practice audiologic care. And, and again, like, I, I understand the perspective of this. Like you pay money to your insurance company, they're supposed to be taking that money that you're paying them and providing you with different health benefits. One of those benefits being hearing aid coverage. Sometimes they will be in direct, you know, um, in network with your hearing care professional and other times they go with the third party administrator to handle all the hearing aid stuff. But at the end of the day, what's really happening is that these insurance companies are driving down the payments that they're actually paying to these hearing aid manufacturers. And the hearing aid manufacturers are basically like hostages to these insurance companies and they have to do whatever these insurance companies want because so many people have hearing aid coverage under these managed care programs even though the coverage sucks. And what I mean by that is, again, the quality of care that you get. Even if you get a good pair of hearing aids through your insurance, the likelihood of you doing really well with that treatment is much lower than if you were to privately go out and purchase those devices from a hearing care professional who is committed to following best practices. 
Now, um, there's probably some of you out there who are like, Cliff, why are you being an apologist for the hearing aid industry? They've been charging a lot of money for hearing aids for a really long time. And when you really look at the pricing of hearing aids now compared to what they were 10, 20 years ago, uh, taking inflation into account, hearing aids should be substantially more expensive than what they are now through the private pay channel. And they're not. Um, they are stagnant. I mean, I just I was just making a video, which is kind of what prompted this, making a video um, looking at hearing tracker data of how expensive hearing aids are now compared to six years ago before all of this massive inflation that we've had here in the United States and probably worldwide. But hearing aid prices are actually lower now than what they were six years ago before you take inflation into account, which means that technically speaking, hearing aids now are less expensive than what they were six years ago. And that's not typically how things are supposed to function. But I believe the reason behind that is that these insurance companies are essentially dictating that prices need to come down but in order to get the prices to come down, they are essentially underpaying the manufacturers and they're underpaying the hearing care professional. And who ultimately gets to have the chunk of money is the third party uh, managed care company. And the insurance company gets to save money because that's really what they want to do is save money. Now, again, how do I know who ultimately is making the money? Well, if you simply go and look at the stock prices for hearing aid manufacturers and you look at the stock prices for insurance companies, it will be very clear who's making all of the money when it comes to hearing aids and not just hearing aids, but all health in general. So let's go ahead and take a look at the ticker, the stock ticker for DeMont, who owns Oticon, and let's look at United Healthcare stock ticker. So if we look over the past five years, the stock price for DeMont, who owns Oticon, has gone up around 21%, which is a modest return for that particular company, but by no means are they setting any kind of records over the course of a five-year period. But if we go and look United Health Group, who owns United Healthcare Hearing, we can see that their stock price over the past five years has gone up 125%. Now, DeMont is actually going through a downturn right now, most likely due to the fact that they actually pulled their Oticon brands from these managed care formularies, included United Health Hearing. Basically saying that they're willing to take a loss as a company on this in order to stop allowing these insurance companies to dictate the quality of care that their patients are actually receiving from their hearing aids. This means that DeMont is so not greedy that they are willing to let their stock price tank because they do not want these insurance companies to continue to devalue the care that you guys receive with their hearing aids. Now I know that you have not been living under a rock because you know that the insurance companies are the ones that are dictating pretty much everything from a healthcare perspective. Why do you think the healthcare sucks so bad in the United States? It is largely due to these insurance companies dictating pretty much everything about your health. And the last time I checked, insurance companies do not have licenses to practice medicine or audiology for that matter. Yet they do it anyway, and the people who get screwed over are you, the hearing aid users. Now I know that there's a healthy amount of you out there watching this video who's going to be like, Cliff, you are a piece of crap. Um, hearing aids are too expensive, and we think it's bull crap, and hearing aids should not cost that much. And listen, I get it. I don't want my health care to be really high and, and expensive. But at the end of the day, I really want quality of care for myself, for my family, for everyone in the United States. But we continue to blame the wrong people. We place blame on the wrong groups of people, meaning the manufacturers, the hearing care professionals, uh, everyone else involved with it. But we never seem to blame the insurance companies, which really seems strange to me. But honestly, I'd like to know what you think. If you think that really the people who are greedy in the hearing aid industry are the manufacturers or they're the hearing care professionals or it's the insurance company, you let me know who you think and please justify why in the comment section. Otherwise, I'm gonna look at it and be like, what are you talking about? You can't just make a statement and not back it up with any facts. But I've gotta let my blood pressure simmer down here a little bit because I have been complaining about these insurance companies for years at this point. And I think you all are starting to notice that the quality of care that you're getting from your hearing care professional, if you are using a third party uh, benefit program, is starting to get worse and worse as the years go on because more and more people are getting fit with hearing aids, which means that they can spend less and less time with you because reimbursement rates are going lower and 
lower and the insurance companies are making more and more. But that is all that I wanted to talk about today, guys. If you like this video, again, make sure that you hit that like button. And as always, I'll see you next week.